I'm Dan Reed. Reed. Dan. So I'm director of Planet Forward here at GW. Um, we are an environmental storytelling platform for college students. Now, we're not just college students. We'll take ideas from anyone. But college students are our target audience because we want to work with young minds and the next generation of innovators, entrepreneurs, storytellers to tell the story of the planet. So our goal as a platform is to educate, inform, and inspire. We educate students on how to tell stories about the planet. We're hopefully better informing the public through these stories and inspiring as well, both how to tell good stories and be inspired by the story. Um, and Anna Sumi is our digital media producer um, and our resident storyteller. This is our website, planetforward.org. So if you want to go there sometime and check it out, make it part of your daily routine. You check the New York Times, you check the Washington Post. You can check out planetforward.org and get your latest stories on um, the planet. So what we really wanted to do with you guys today was talk about techniques for storytelling. Um, especially if you're going to do one of the pitch videos that I believe you have to do for the new Ventures competition. It might be good just to get a survey of who's in the room and how we're tackling storytelling. So who is submitting a video to the competition and needs maybe a little bit of help how they craft that story? So for who just wants to know a little bit more about visual storytelling because you're curious and you've always wanted to crack this. Okay. Um, who else is here for any other reason? Just shout out. Just for fun or is there a specific project you're working on that we can help with? Well, my team, we, we won the graduate track in Pitch George. Great. And then we're, we're looking at other pitch competitions. Yep. And with Pitch George, we had to submit a three-minute video longer side, mm -hmm. the other competitions, it cuts off in a minute. Right. And they want professionally crafted videos to go in there, not just like two guys sitting there talking. Yep. So, I mean, I've looked at this, there's a whole bunch of the online platforms you can use, but I figured, you know, why not come in to see if there's other digital tools available at GW that we can use to do sure. more effectively. Perfect. That's helpful for us to know. How about you? Yeah. The story that I'm trying to tell is the labor workers and how their lives are impacted by climate change back at home. Great. Are you affiliated with GW? Yeah, I'm a freshman here. That's great. I work at a think tank here in DC and we're looking for new formats to kind of get our policy analysis out and kind of set the writing and what's all the things that we're exploring how we can use video. Excellent. Anybody here from the Climathon that was on campus? Okay. All right, this is helpful for us to know as we go through. I just want to set some expectations, too. You could spend the entire week or even a semester or even a lifetime focused on this topic. So we're not going to solve every problem or question or, or answer everything tonight. We're just trying to give you guys the tools to succeed in this space. So we're going to kind of lay it out, and then I, I encourage you guys to just ask questions throughout because stop us if any of this is confusing or we're moving too fast on it but um, just a quick overview again we're a network of college students telling stories about the planet um, we're really trying to hone in on this area of science and sustainability storytelling because there's a need for it um, if anybody's looked at the Pew study from last year that showed the knowledge gap between scientists and the public which is this way um, public and science on a lot of issues, GMOs, vaccines, um, a lot of, there's a big gap in between the two. So storytelling and communication is one area that we can help close that gap. Um, really for us with storytelling, uh, this goes back to our, our human existence. We have a natural need to hear and tell stories. And storytelling really activates the brain. It's much like learning a language or even speaking a the language. There are parts of our brain that activate when we are told a story and when we tell a story. Um, usually when you hear a good story, don't you find yourself playing out the event in your head as it's going along? 
So as you're telling a pitch and as you're uh, trying to inspire somebody, that's, that's one thing you, you could think about is, am I engaging somebody well enough that they're playing this out in their head as well? Um, you know, it really activates our emotions as well. How, who's cried after watching a story? I think we all have. You guys can raise your hands too. It's cool. Um, you know, it, it really flips on parts of our brains and our emotions that, um, you know, can really evoke an emotion in us. So, uh, from cave paintings, the Bible, we dream in stories. This is kind of the way our world works. Um, I, I put down the name Rune Ar Arledge here. If anybody can name who Rune Arledge is, just tell me, just for fun. I had the ABC for a while, but ABC Sports before that. Yes. The wide world of sports. So if anybody's been watching Monday Night Football or 2020 or Nightline, you can thank Rune Arledge. But I think the coolest thing he did um, was really he transformed the Olympics. When you watch the Olympics... The thrill of victory, the you, agony of defeat. That's right. You get to see the story of the gymnast before they fall over on the balance beam. And so whether you have an interest in curling or... Uh, the balance beam doesn't matter. You now know the story behind that person, and so that's how we're compelled by that particular sport. Um, so I, I point him out as just a great character in this space. Uh, the other fun fact is that all of us are storytellers, whether we know it or not. Um, Instagram. I mean, you're telling stories every day just by uploading a picture. Um, you're doing that to ins inform and inspire, uh, perhaps evoke an emotion out of someone. I think, though, besides doing it for an organization, when we're just doing it to tell our family, hey, I'm you know, standing next to the Washington Monument, we're also telling a story. So I think we're doing this all the time, whether we realize it or not. The coolest part of that, of course, is, and I put it in caps, the internet. Um, we, this is an unbelievable time in human history for us to reach uh, really everyone. Um, you know, when the person who started Planet Ford here at GW is Frank Sesno, who runs the School of Media and Public Affairs, and he had a 30-year career or so. I don't think he'd want me saying 30 years. But 30-year career or so at CNN. And when he came over here to the school and started Planet Ford, his whole thing was, we can all tell stories because we have one of these. And we can reach more people than I ever could at CNN because you don't have to subscribe to cable to be able to get an Instagram picture. Um, you know, and the continent of Africa, they didn't plant broadband line into the ground so you could watch cable and get your internet. They're leapfrogging all of that and in some cases have faster internet than we do. They're, everybody is connected in a new and different way. So we have an unbelievable opportunity to do storytelling here that we've never had before. Um, and I would, oh, if you just go back real quick, I would just add to it that the cameras, I just want to remind you, the cameras in these phones, I don't care if you're an Apple or an Android or a, a Google phone user or whatever it may be, these cameras are better than any camera you could imagine 10 years ago. Um, they're shooting in high definition, the audio is good. I, I think any network news person would have done anything to have one of these cameras, you know, 15 years ago. So. We're doing amazing things with the technology that I think we all need to keep in mind. I think it's just a good gut check. Ten years ago was the first iPhone, 2007. Um, think about how far that's happened in just ten years. The next one. Ah, we wanted to give you some examples, and we're really setting this around pitch videos, since that seems to be a highlight here. But this was a video that got submitted to Planet Forward a couple years ago from some students at Purdue. Um, they created a uh, all-terrain vehicle. This is in the Engineering and Agriculture Science Department. Um, these two students created, came up with this idea. They were working on a project in Cameroon. Um, how can we create an all-terrain vehicle for farmers that serves all their needs but uses local parts because they can't take it down the street to you know, Jiffy Lube or Pet Boys to be fixed? Um, so it needed to source local parts. It needed to uh, go over tough terrain. Um, it needed to be affordable. Um, they needed to educate the person on it. So they needed angel investors to get this project started. So they came up with this video, and I'm, we're just going to watch the first minute of it, but I wanted to show you guys how they were setting up this story.
Cameroon, known as Little Africa, is typical of much of Sub-Saharan Africa, where rural transportation is a major challenge. In Cameroon, 92% of roadways are unpaved. With only 19 motor vehicles per 1,000 people, affordable motorized transportation is uncommon at best. Field work is done mostly by hand. Water and crops are collected and transported manually. Processing of grains is usually by hand or with basic tools. The lack of rural power is a major factor in Sub-Saharan Africa is notoriously low farm productivity. Significant time and energy is spent on manual labor, often by women and children, to the neglect of education and additional income opportunities. High transportation costs can leave both the farmer and the consumer food insecure. Hi, I'm David. And I'm Jeremy. So we'll cut it there because I think anybody who's done a pitch video knows where they're about to go. It's in the shark tank mode. Um, but I love the setup of this story. This was all shot on their cell phones when they were in Cameroon. Um, they shot video of everything, every minute while they were over there, of, of people doing things with their hands from the perspective of the pup as it was moving. It was really loud, but you got to hear it. So I think it evokes different emotions as you're watching it. Um, you get a nice visual setting of where they're working. They explain the problem that their solution is solving up front, and they did that at the very beginning, so then they could use the latter two-thirds of the video to talk about the solution. So that's a good example. All right, I'm going to introduce the bad example because it takes a little explaining. I'm going to let this play through. Yeah. Um, but this isn't necessarily a pitch, it's an audition tape, um, which is kind of pitching yourself in a way. Um, and this is an example of, it should start in a minute, or there, yeah, yeah. So this is an example of just like a really bad way to pitch yourself to get hired, basically, is what it is. So. Should we play it full screen? Sure. Why not? <laughs> they're not car pools! They're not car, and they're not pools! <laughs> Uh, an angry tuna sandwich. Ah! Don't eat me, buddy! Don't eat me! Uh, Carlos Mencia. <laughs> um. Yeah, you, we have beaters that won't even build a wall here! <laughs> okay, so, so... if you're trying to bad. pitch yourself as a comedian, don't, don't do that. And one of the things that I think he does particularly poorly is, um, besides the production value of it, he doesn't offer any real explanation or any story. He just jumps right into it. And I think that's what, after watching a few pitch videos and a few videos, um, that tends to be a fallacy of a lot of people's videos, is they just jump right into their idea. Because um, you're really excited about it, and you should be, but you need to backtrack a little bit. And like in the first video, they showed the problem first and explained it through a story to get you invested in the idea before they explained more of themselves or even introduced themselves. So I'd say these are the eight things or so that Anna and I and others keep in mind when we're telling a good story. It's not in this order. These are just great tips to have. Keep it simple. I think that I actually do think this is in order in that regard. That's the most important thing. Keep it really simple. Do not overthink this. Do not try to tell too much information. Um, you know, if, if you're looking at Facebook on your cell phone, as you're scrolling through, those videos autoplay. You have five to 15 seconds to really capture somebody's attention. You need a strong visual, a good voice, or a good character up front to do so. So keep it simple and model it around one, one piece there, an image, a fact, or a person. Make a connection. And sometimes you do that by making it personal. So people love people. Go back to Rune Arnledge and the whole ABC Olympics. Um, those stories are personal, and that's why we care. Have some stakes in your story, not the ones that sizzle, but the ones where we are either going to gain or lose something. Um, in some ways, you know, the best stories are really uh, compelling characters overcoming obstacles for a worthy outcome. So that's Frank says in the language, isn't it? But um, really when you think about it, that's, it, there's something to gain or lose for that compelling character. Uh, have a great first line, we talked about that, but just as important, have a clear ending. 
when people are walking away from your video or your blog or your verbal story, it has to close as well as it starts. Uh, have fun and definitely don't rant. Um, I think one of the, just like that terrible comedian, uh, <laughs> don't rant. People aren't interested in rants. If you want to rant, go to a website where you can rant. But in general, if you're going to tell a story, especially if you're going to advocate for yourself or something you're working on, rants are not the way you want to go. So, you might ask yourself, where do I begin when I need to tell a story? And in our world, we have five questions that we use when we start it. They look a lot Should like the same questions Lex had in the pitch competition that he asks you to answer in, um, in the video you have to submit. Do we want to pass these out? Oh, everybody's everybody's got, got one. So, uh, do you All want right. to take a minute? Sure, so we'll just go over these really quickly. And you should have them right here. I think this, if there's anything you can take away from today, this is a really good one. Um, that's why we gave it to you on paper. Um, but the five questions, what is the idea of innervation? Um, what's new about it? How does it work? What difference can it make? And why do you love it? And I think why do you love it is one of the most important questions you need to ask yourself because you're going to be putting time and effort and lost sweat and tears into this, some of my videos maybe, but there has to be passion behind it and emotion, and that's what's gonna come through to your audience. So um, when I start a video, I always start by asking myself, like, why does this mean something? Writing it somewhere, and then looking back at that as I'm working, just to remind myself that I do care about this, and I, it may take a lot of work, and it might be stressful, but at the end of the day, it's important. Um, so it's just good to remind yourself of that throughout the process. So should we take some time to do this or no? No. We'll okay. Cool. All right. So we're gonna go into just video 101. Um, before you can really start, you really need to research um, and have your idea laid out. Um, if it's, you know, an interview with somebody in particular, you should research and know exactly what you're talking about. Because if you don't know what you're talking about, why should people watch your video and listen to you and um, you should be that voice of authority um, in some cases. And you should also plan out your video. Um, and accurate information is always important. So for video, it's all visual. And you want people to pay attention and not click to another screen and just listen to the audio. So <laughs> thinking visually is really important. And um, before you even start, think about those visuals that are going to be really compelling um, to tell your story. If you're um, talking to somebody about how much they like to bike, um, you should have a video of them biking at some point, just to communicate that even further. Um, so, like I was storyboard, and I'll show you some examples of my storyboards, but in your storyboard, you wanna think about everything. What is the person you're talking to gonna say? Maybe it's you, what are you gonna say in that um, shot? What other shots are you gonna get? Like the biking shot, are you gonna have music? Are you going to have narration? Are there gonna be other sounds coming in? Like maybe the bike wheels turning? Um, so you wanna think about everything, because you can never be too prepared. Basically. And one way you can do that is like if you're doing a story on bikes, take out a piece of paper and just start writing keywords that you associate with biking. Think about bike racks, helmets, people, bike lanes, cities. Uh, you know, in Amsterdam you have bike garages that everything's parked in. So think about all the different possible things that are associated with that key term or idea so you can identify which visuals you can capture. Um, so the reason I brought up bikes is because I did do a video on biking um, in Madison where I'm from and so these are my two storyboards um, this is just basic like a shot of a lake <laughs> in the bike path so I knew I was gonna get that this is I mean you don't have to be Picasso or anything here um, as long as you understand what's going on that's all that's really important and then this um, was just to illustrate there are two different kinds of shots there's a roll or the interview or the speaker so these, and then there's B-roll, and that's all of the shots that you're using to kind of stitch together the interviews to illustrate your point further and really um, visual visualize the words that are and the text, not the text, the like voices um, that are going along with your video. So these are all the B-roll shots highlighted that I used. Does everybody get that concept, A-roll and B-roll? Does anybody have any questions about that? So what do you not get about works? it? Yeah. No, that's fine. No, it's fine. I mean, I just, like, I, if you totally don't understand it, like, this is just something, like, has become so ingrained in me that it's almost yeah. hard for me to explain because it's, like, 
think I don't know, it's like second nature. Yep. Um, yeah, I would say, well, we have um, on our sheets, we have our storytelling toolkit um, link, but also Vimeo has yep. some really great resources so just, on that as well. I can and do a quick YouTube. A roll, B roll thing too. Yeah. Um, so who watches 60 Minutes? Okay. So when you're watching, uh, say, the CEO of Goldman Sachs being interviewed, you know, there's usually that shot of that person being interviewed. But then you might hear Steve Croft talking afterwards. He's doing a narration or a voiceover, as we call it, explaining. Maybe he starts the top of the 60 Minutes story explaining who the CEO of Goldman Sachs is and where he's from. You know when you see that shot of the, the CEO or whatever walking down the hallway to their office, or their hands typing on their keyboard or in a boardroom doing something, but you don't hear what they're doing, you just hear Steve Croft's voice over it? That's B-roll. So what you're looking for in a story, say you were doing a two-minute story on bikes like this one, um, and say Anna has a narrator for it, while that narration's going on, you can show additional shots of, say, people biking under a bridge or bike racks full of bikes to add visuals to the narration. Right, exactly. So, like, in this video in particular, um, like, I interviewed my parents, actually. Um, and so I, like, talked to my dad. I was like, how long have you been biking in Madison? He's like, oh, like, um, 40 years, whatever. My mom's like, oh, I bike to work. So I got footage of her biking. And then as she's talking, I put that footage over it. And that was the B-roll just to illustrate it um, further beyond just what she was saying. Um, and it's just a really nice way because people don't want to just stare at somebody talking the entire time, right? Like you were saying before, you don't want just a shot of like talking into your, um, your camera on your, on your um, Mac, <coughs> MacBook. Um, so it helps kind of weave the story along without just having a face talking at you for two minutes. Does that make sense? Anybody have questions about that? Not every video has B-roll. If you were talking straight into your camera doing a pitch just on a webcam, you may not use B-roll. It might be one minute of you just talking straight to camera and that's all you need to tell the story. What you're working on at that point in your story is what, like we talked about earlier, like keeping it simple, making it personal, telling you a good beginning and a good end uh, to tell your story. This is kind of the next level. Yeah. If you wanted to tell a story about bikes, you want to not just have person talking in the camera you want to show the bikes you want to show the bike racks you want to you know talk about if it's uh bike lanes on the road you want to show those so yeah and i we have um a video we're going to show in a couple of slides and i'll stop it and explain every single shot or yeah. the first few shots at least just so we get a better idea of that um and so then once you have everything planned that's when you can actually go out and shoot and the video i did on um bikes actually i used my iPhone for all of it. So it doesn't need to be a fancy camera at all. Um, like Dan said earlier, iPhones are amazing. Um, but when you're shooting, you really need to think in shots. And this comes back to your storyboard. Think about um, what you want to look at because you're making a video for somebody that isn't there. So if they were there, what would they need to see to completely convey your story? Um, what pieces do they need to make everything or to be able to understand everything? And then get that in a shot. Um, and you also want to hold your shot. So um, once the video is made, you don't want to have like, you know, people biking for 30 seconds. But when you're shooting, you don't want to just be moving your camera the entire time. You want to have a steady shot and just let it let it go for like 10 seconds. Um, and my rule is like you can never have too much footage to edit because at some point, I mean, it's just all you never want to have too less of footage, I guess. Um, and then a really important rule is seeing their eyes. Eyes are what really humanize people. So when you're shooting, you want to make sure that the person's eyes are in view. If you're too far away to see their eyes, then you probably want to get closer. Um, because that's really what connects us to people, is being able to like look them in the eye. Um, and then also, I like this rule, especially for iPhones, because the zoom really um, brings down the quality, but zooming with your feet. So um, if I wanted to shoot Dan, I wouldn't want to zoom here. I would just get closer to him to keep the quality of the shot. Any questions about some of these bullets? Okay, and this is just, we're just going really quickly through it, but um, we can go through more later. Um, okay, so this goes back to shooting again, is standing still or using a tripod. And you can get tripods for iPhones, like this one. You can just use this on a table. Um, or even just holding it makes it a little bit steadier than if you were just holding it with your hands. 
Um, and then holding your camera horizontally, one of my professors taught me this um, freshman year, but we, our eyes are horizontal, um, so we, we see everything horizontally, so it doesn't really make sense to have like a vertical shot. Plus on, um, when you go to edit it, it brings down the quality and it just looks a lot better if you have horizontal. Yeah, that's also, that's changing a little bit in some ways. Yeah. I just always shoot horizontal. This screen is horizontal. If you shot this way, and then we put that video up here, it would be taking up this much of the screen. So holding your phone this way will ensure that the picture is this size on the television. Now, if you're using Snapchat to tell your story, the only way you're going to view Snapchat is on this phone, or is on a device shaped like this. You don't go on you know, Safari or Chrome to watch Snapchat, so you'd want to shoot this way. Does that make sense? All right, um, don't use a filter. I mean, you can add a filter later, but it really bring, takes away from yeah. your professional credibility. Um, and then shoot what you find is interesting. I kind of touched on this earlier, but if you wouldn't want to watch it, then why would somebody else? Um, keep the light behind you, and I'm going to have um, a, a diagram for this, but um, if the sun is behind me, then I want the camera... Let me just go to the diagram. Yeah. I don't know how to explain this. Oh, this is rule of thirds, but there yeah. we go. So yeah, so the um, the light source is here. The camera is pointing this way. Yep. Because if the light source is, because um, then it's lighting his face. If it were behind him, then all you'd be able to see is the, ca um, the sun, and his face would be completely washed out. So it's just a rule of thumb to have the light behind the camera. That also helps with the eyes thing yeah. you know, I was talking about. If you have good lighting on your subject or on the inanimate object or whatever you're shooting, it will be much clearer on your camera. Can you go back one? Yep. Okay, and then rule of thirds. Um, this is for every shot, but in particular, if you have a person, um, is you want them to be on, if you break the shot or your camera viewfinder into thirds, you want them to be filling either one this third or that third, not directly in the center. And it may be different for pitch videos, but and for like interviewing, you don't want them looking directly in the camera. I think the only person that can really get away with that are like news anchors and President Obama, um, because it's really, <laughs> really awkward to watch a video where they're staring right at you. It's just really uncomfortable. So you want them looking past the camera and in one third. Um, it just, if you look at like 60 minutes, that's what they do yep. in an interviewing. It's Again, just, this one really depends. If you're interviewing yeah. a subject and it's part of your story, don't have them look at the camera. Have them look at the subject who's interviewing them because it allows the viewer who's watching to understand that the person being interviewed is, is you know, being interviewed. If you're doing a pitch, you're pretty much going to talk straight into the camera. It's yeah. You're making your, you know, pitch to the world for why something should be the way it is. So you're talking directly to the, the viewer. Yeah, plus I think that makes it just a lot easier for interviewing. It makes it a bunch higher quality interview um, because people feel really uncomfortable looking right at the camera. So if you they're looking at you instead of the camera, it can be more of a conversation and just sound a lot more natural and just be a higher quality. They'll say, they'll talk more and they'll sound more natural and just sound better, so. Any questions about these two diagrams or these concepts? Okay, so one of the most important parts of video is audio. Um, if a video has really bad audio, like people aren't going to watch it. I think this is the most important <laughs> part of any video. If your audio stinks, if the air conditioner is running in the background, people will turn it off. They're not interested in that. We had two students today who, uh, in our sustainability reporting class, had set up an interview with somebody in an advocacy group in town. They had been working for weeks to get this interview set up. When they came back, and they played that video, all you could hear was the fish tank behind the person they interviewed. Yep, and so it was completely ruined. They have to go back and redo the interview. So as you're, you know, and we're, we're in a city, so if you're outdoors, you gotta think about sirens, you gotta think about street traffic, you gotta think about people yelling. Just always pay attention to audio. Yeah, and this goes back to like interviewing too, but don't feel shy. Um, if you notice sirens in the background, the person you're talking to may not notice that. So tell them to, you know, can you go back and repeat that? Sorry, there was a siren. Or, um, Cause at the end of the day, they want to look good on camera too. So they're not going to want to have a siren blocking out what they're saying. Um, okay, so this is self-promotion. Self-promotion, this is Anna's video. <laughs> this so is a video I not made. Surprised. 
Here we go. Um, yes. Yeah. When you're at school, you you just kind of are in that um, kind of cyclo. Just you know, you try to get to class. You want to get your showers done. You want to like drink as much water as you need to. Um, and then you just kind of like get everything. Yeah. So going back to B-roll and A-roll, this is A-roll. This is just straight up <laughs> interviewing um, him talking. And so you see is, the lower thirds rule? Yeah. So this he's person. looking this way, and I'm the camera's here, and I'm right here. So he's looking at me, not at the camera. He's the, looking past it. And the yeah. rule of, oh, sorry. I was just going to say real quick, this rule of thirds, what it allows you to do as the viewer is you gain perspective. You're, because they're not here in the middle of the room, you get a, a sense of what's in the room and their environment around them. Yes. Um, the light. I'm, gonna, I'm asking about the light because I feel like this, this is not good. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. All right. Two, as people of color, I think we have to be even more special, even more careful with light. Is the light not behind him right now? Yeah, so it kind of is, but there's also a light here. And you're right. I made this a couple of years ago, so that's t a very valid point. Um, yeah. No, that's right. a really good point. Uh, you know, this is creating extra shadows because of this window that's pouring in. There is a light right here, like an actual, you know, one of those nice camera setup lights. Um, and I think, too, with people with glasses, that can always be a challenge, too, in terms of reflection. So you may just have to experiment a little bit. Sometimes you're not going to get it perfect, and that's just really the way it is. But, you know, and, and in some places, too, the, you're just dealing with what the subject's environment is, and you just got to roll with it. Um, that's valid. I made this when I was 20, so thank you <laughs> for pointing that out. So you don't have much time to actually think about um, your water consumption and like what you're actually doing with the water. So this is B-roll. Just like adding more to the narrative. Um, and whenever you have facts, you want to cite the source. Um, that's really important. Um, otherwise, you're... You're just adding to your credibility, basically. You want to be a very credible source. I mean, it's just average, I mean, journalism. You want to be credible, so. Usually, if I'm late for class, it can be um, as short as about, like, 15 minutes. But even that is still really long. Um, on some other days, it does get up to, like, 20, 25. So it depends. Uh, if it's just, like, showering normal, it's probably going to be, like, 10 minutes. But if I'm doing my hair, that's, like, a 30-minute endeavor. If I'm in a rush, it's, like, 10 minutes. But if, like, I'm not, you know, 30-ish. Yeah. So... Maybe it's not the best example, but... So that's, like, the the point there is the audio. I used an external microphone, like a lavalier mic. Um, and even though there's music in the background, the person speaking is still completely audible because the level of their, um, of their audio is higher um, significantly than the music. So if you're going to use music, that's a really important thing to um, keep in mind, especially if you're... Like, what, what I did there is... When somebody wasn't speaking, I'd bring the audio of the music up, but as soon as somebody started speaking, I brought that down, and so I used one of these mics, which we'll get into in a second, but here's an example of not so good audio. Awesome. Not <laughs> so Okay, so you can't even hear a word she's saying. Yeah, so her, yeah, so... I mean, she's probably just doing this into um, a, I can't, why can't I remember, MacBook. Um, yeah. So besides that, like, you can't really hear her. Anyway, the audio is not that great of quality. And then she decided to add music, and the level of the music is at a really high level, so you can barely understand a word she's saying. One um, thing I like to do is after I'm done with my video and I export it, say I'm doing it in, I, it could be Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> um, is go back and listen to the video with headphones on, do it with just the computer speaker, the natural laptop speaker or desktop, um, you know, stream it on your Apple TV or whatever, listen to it on different devices so you can hear how it sounds. It's going to sound totally different sometimes in your headphones than it does off the machine. Yeah. So getting back into, I don't know how to do this. Well, yeah, it's worth doing that. All right. Audio. Okay. Um, so natural sound isn't a bad thing. Like the shower, you could hear the shower a bit. Um, sometimes it, you need that to 
adds the context of like if you see a tractor in a video you want to hear the tractor otherwise it's unnatural it feels weird to see a tractor without hearing it things like that um you don't ha it doesn't have to be the most prominent noise um but you should be able to hear it somewhat um and then using an external mic if you have one um, it makes a huge difference i bought this one on amazon it's especially made for smartphones um and you can just plug it into your headphone jack and then this is this is for interviewing it's um like you'd put it the person would clip it to their lapel and it would just get their voice um and it's a good way to um especially for interviewing or for you know if you're talking to the camera um you want just their voice and not as much of the background noise. This is what you would use. Um, and you can get them for, this one was a little bit more expensive, but you can go on Amazon or there's a camera store in, um, right by like Aban Pan or whatever. Yeah, there's one in this building, um, 2000 Pen. Yeah, and it's like, there's one for 20 bucks on Amazon. So it's not a huge investment and it makes a world of difference to have um, for your audio. Right there. It depends. If you're um, recording the audio, like if you're using your smartphone and you're using like the voice memo app and just using like an audio recording, then it's going to be separate. But if you're um, recording it straight to the, just with the video, it's going to be um, all in one file. Um, but then when you upload that into like a editing software, like um, Premiere or something like that, then it'll, sh you can edit them separately if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have like an extension of that? I'm just thinking if you're using your phone. Yeah. Right. And then you want to use that simultaneously. Is there like a Bluetooth extension you can get? Um, yeah, I'm sure you can. I don't know personally. Um, but Bluetooth I'm sure would be awesome. Um, <laughs> I think that'll be a little bit more expensive. Yeah, um, I mean, in some cases like this one that's connected to that camera is wireless. Yeah. So this is a way more expensive setup. So the opposite end is on that camera. Yeah. No, um, I was just wondering because if you're recording the video, you, bet. Then you have this. Like, it's kind of a short cord. Right. Yep. So I've actually recorded interviews with this, and this isn't too short, because especially with the iPhone, um, you need to be this close to get that good shot of somebody's face when they're talking. Um, you would want to use a different mic if you were just getting, like, B-roll or something, or not use the mic, just use the um, built-in mic. Um, but it's actually not too short. Let me ask our video guy. Do you know if there's an extension for the stereo cable? Uh, I think uh, your question is, say, I'm interviewing you, yeah. and you've got the microphone, and I've got the camera right here. How do we get yeah. the cable all the way there? Is there an extension to run this yeah, stereo actually, input into here? I actually bought a really cheap, uh, they used to use these um, when they were doing newscastings. Like, it, everything was wired. Yeah. And so you pop a double A into these, like, things, and it runs for, like, 25 feet. So I actually bought yeah. one. It's, like, 65 bucks, like, on eBay. And it works better than Lobblers. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm more than happy to give you that. Yeah. So this is like just for smartphones, and it works perfectly for smartphones, um, especially for like the type of shot you want for interviewing. Um, I think it works fine. But if you do find yourself in a situation, I'm sure there's extensions of some sort on Amazon. Yeah. I have a mouse. <coughs> the Oh really? Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. So it could plug into an H1, it could plug into your phone. Yeah. Plug into, yeah. Awesome. Whatever. Yeah, there you go. And exactly. you uh, you can buy that kind of equipment on websites like B&H Photo. Um, I think Amazon's got a lot of that stuff now. Um, I'm shameless self-promotion, I guess, commercials for those companies. But I think those are two easiest places to get them. All right. And then you want to practice um, speaking before you start. And this is especially for like iPhones where you can't plug in your headphones and listen as you're recording. Um, so maybe record a little bit, listen back, make sure it got the audio because um, you don't want to record an entire thing and get back and edit it and find that you have no, no audio or really bad audio. Um, if you do have, if you're using like a DSLR or an, a bigger, nicer camera that has a headphone jack and a mic jack, then you want to be listening and as you're recording to make sure that you're getting the audio that you want. Yeah, that's your testing one, two, three moment, you know, yeah. do it, record it, go back, watch it, listen to it in your headphones, hear how it sounds, um, and then start. Exactly. 
All right, so checking your levels, that's kind of the same thing. Um, your audio levels, if you have, if you're using a nicer camera like a DSLR or something higher quality, um, then it will have those levels and you wanna, it generally is like very self-explanatory and will go to like the green level. Um, it's generally like negative six um, or negative 12, but you want it to reach that level. You don't want them to be too quiet. You don't want them to be too loud. You wanna make sure that they're getting, um, you're getting nice audio and you can adjust it too on nicer cameras. Um, on iPhones, you kind of get what you what you get. Um, that's why it's important to um, practice and check and make sure that it's recording the way you want it to. Um, and then we mentioned this earlier, but if you're going to use music, um, remember to bring the volume down while someone's talking, just so you can be heard. Um, and make sure you credit music um, and other. If you're using other footage from somebody that you didn't personally shoot, you need to um, credit all of it um, and make sure it's Creative um, Commons licensed or check the licensing on it. Um, Free Music Archive is a really good website to get all Creative Commons licensed music that you can use, but you just need to make sure that you credit what you use. And just to be clear, the music happens during editing. Yes. You know, don't yes. press play on the boombox behind your interview. <laughs> yes, uh, exactly. This, this all happens post-production. Think about Anna's video with the water. Um, you know, when she had the sound of the water coming out of the shower head and hitting the tub, you heard kind of the sound of the music in the background. So she was balancing the two sounds. Um, think about NPR. You know, if you were doing a story on food waste for NPR and you're at, you tell them in the story, you're the, the narrator, and you say, I'm at the garbage dump, you know, oftentimes you would hear the sound of what's happening at the dump. Is it the crumpling of the garbage? Is it the sound of a dump truck? Um, so, and that's, there's no visual involved there. That's why audio is so important in this field when you're, when you're going to do some storytelling. All right, well, that's it. It's a really basic overview. Yep, so a couple things here. If you were to go to our website, um, you would see a storytelling toolkit that we've uploaded. So when you're here at planetford.org, it's right here. Click on that, and then um, you can kind of go through each element here. Yeah, so we just kind of go through like storytelling first and then you can choose. Um, we don't just do um, video at Planet Forward, um, although that's our most comprehensive in the toolkit. Um, we also have like audio if you want to make a podcast, um, infographics, infographics, written work. Um, so you if you go to the bottom, you choose you want to do video. A lot of the stuff we just talked about is in here, so you can go back and look at what's a storyboard. Storyboarding, this looks ridiculous. This is really important. You need to draft out how you want to visually tell your story. Otherwise, you can spend hours in front of your computer just trying to make things work. It also helps when you're planning your, when you actually go do the shoot. You have an idea of how you want the story to be crafted, what shots you want to get. It's not always going to line up perfectly. You're going to go do your shoot or do an interview, um, and things are going to change as they go. You may hear something completely different that you didn't realize you were going to capture. You may see something you wanted to capture that you didn't know was there. That part's really important. Um, but as you go through the toolkit, you can just keep toggling forward. And here's an explanation of B-roll. Um, so anyway, it's all on our website. Just want to let you guys know it's there. And on top of that, for the students who are uh, working on their pitches, I'd like to offer this. We're going to have office hours in our office in this building, which is on the second floor. So that's December 12th and 13th from 11 to 2 o'clock. So if you just want to come in and show us your video and have us provide a little feedback, or if even you just have a question about, I don't know how to edit. I don't know how to piece this part here. I don't know how to bring the audio, the, the music down. I can't hear my subject. Um, think of this more like a help desk. Like We're here to take a look at anything you guys are working on and, and assist in it. We're not going to do it for you, but you know Anna, myself, and our senior editor will be around, and we're, we're happy to look and listen at anything. All I ask is if you don't mind writing down info at planetforward.org, you can send us an email and that'll help us, um, you know, make sure that we're lined up good on time so we, I don't know if five people show up at the same time. I don't even know if one will show up, but we, that'll help us as we go through. Yes? So what type of file do you need to export your video as? Yeah. Say so like a quick time file? is generally the best. Yeah. So when you ingest 
your footage off of your, say you shoot it on an iPhone on your MacBook. Um, is it, I can't remember the name of the... Premiere. Premiere. No, that's, that's the expensive. The Adobe, yeah. What's the regular was, software um, that comes I with? I mean, iMovie comes on every Mac. And that's yeah, so say you're using fine. iMovie. Are you a Mac user? Or a, okay, so you use iMovie. You bring that video in and you'll have your timeline. So you'll see your video and then you've got your audio. That's where you can chop it up and tell your story. Yeah, and so um, like putting a puzzle together. Yep. Um, when you go to export, I would say QuickTime is usually the best way um, to export that yeah. file as. MP4 I've used MP4 is good like lower as well. Quality, but yep. Yeah. I had a question. Um, these are a lot of, uh, I guess, like in person, like video. Do you guys have, like, I guess, we're kind of like going back to a video with more like in the marker kind of presentation, maybe the marker, like the drawing. Is mm -hmm. that like, something that takes like more skill? It does. I'm trying to, we do have some of those videos. Um, and the way that we have produced them in the past is you set up one camera on a tripod and then somebody draws it on the whiteboard. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then when you put it in your timeline, you're just doing it times. It's not like a Prezi, it's already kind of there. Yeah, you can, you can speed up the timeline to show it at four times the normal rate. And so that'll show somebody like doing this and then erasing it and going back. And Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So I also have to create something like that. Okay. But um, I don't want to like have my hands with a marker just because um, I think some people do it with better quality where they do it on a tablet. Yeah. But um, I don't like how do, how do you go about doing that? I know like, mm. some teachers will do that. Yeah. It's an interesting question. I think it's yeah. more like an animation question. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds more like animation. Um, I guess if you don't want to be as in the video, you can always do like have a camera overhead as you're like so then just your hand is in it but if you don't even want your hand I think that's more of a you're saying you just want the the visual product no you don't want the person actually drawing it yeah, right so I know like my teacher he, um, he like he will actually write down the, the class lecture yeah using his tablet so you can't see his hand you see the yeah. movements of the marker you know what I mean like he's, yeah, he's, he's, well, that's a screen capture probably yeah. right screen capture but it's also stop motion so you can yeah. also do little bits of motion, take a picture a little bit, take a picture a little bit, take a picture, and then it'll create the same amount of motion, but your hand won't be inside of it. Yeah. That might be a lot more work, though. It's a lot. Though. Yeah. It's a lot of pictures, yeah. but... It's called Eagles, right? And uh, there are some other tools that... What is it called? Videos, right? Videos, right? Okay. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned an iPhone. Mm -hmm. For those of us who haven't joined the iPhone, <laughs> <laughs> well, all of your video on your Android is just as good as an iPhone. Yeah, um, I just so yeah, I just I guess I'm part of the cult and just say iPhone automatically now yeah. at this point. Um, shoot, shoot your video as you normally would on your Android, um, and then you know you'll import that footage the same way you would on a PC. Do you use a like a Microsoft yeah, or a Chromebook? Yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. That's fine. That works. It all works the same way. Mac uses QuickTime, um, you know, so we're we're used to <laughs> doing that world, but it all pretty much works the same. And I think there's some other um, editing software. I don't know if an editing software automatically comes with um, what is it? Is it Windows Movie Windows? Maker? Or? You know, yeah. I did a couple of yeah. Do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Okay. Well, I mean, I think. Um, if you're part of a university or an organization that has the pr Adobe Cloud, I would recommend Premiere. It's free for seven days, so... Yeah, yeah you can knock it out. I was getting ready to say... You, recently, so yeah. Yeah. you can get a <laughs> trial of um, Premiere. It's my favorite. It's, um, it has a bit of a learning curve, but I think there's so many videos on YouTube that explain anything that you're trying to figure out um, that are pretty good. So if I never... If I have a question about Premiere, I generally just type it into YouTube and find somebody that produced a 40-minute video walking me through each also, step. Also, if you have a friend in the art department, do not hesitate to reach out to them, um, because, especially if you can credit them in the video, because they probably more the time to help you out in editing. It's yeah. a seven-day process. Yeah. The Corcoran School of Art. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know a Corcoran student that doesn't have full access to the Adobe suite. So make friends with folks over there, and you can lean on that. You had a question? Do you have a take on multiple shots, so having two cameras set up? 
Yeah. Um, I like it. I if like can, it. If There's... you can swing it, it's really hard to do with one person, especially, I think it's really nice for interviewing in particular, um, because then you can break up that shot, and especially if they're talking about something really emotional or something they're really passionate about, um, having that close-up shot that you can um, switch to is really nice. It's just really difficult to do. I would... Like, Yeah, they had a two shot in this where they were interviewing, and then I thought they did. They were interviewing the subject head on, and then what you could do is have, you know, if Anna's the camera here shooting these guys, I could be standing here and getting a side shot of the person's face. So as they're talking, you have two different camera angles you can draw from to, to you know, just kind of change the monotony of just looking at the camera. It just takes a lot of work, though, because I did this recently. I had two cameras in an interview, and so you have two cameras that you have to constantly kind of be monitoring, and then it works easier, um, a lot easier in editing if you have external audio then, so you have one audio track file that you can mm -hmm. weave them into. Um, so that's three components right there. So if you're just one person, it's a lot of work. And, um, like, I had a camera die on me, and I didn't know, so I, like, lost a camera halfway through, and so there's just... It's a lot easier though if you have like a person for each camera and a person for the audio and a person yeah. for the interview. So if you have a multi-person team, I highly recommend it. And if you're really ambitious, one person, I also recommend it, but it's a lot. Yeah. And you had asked about graphics earlier. Somebody would have produced these graphics and drawn them and then incorporated into the video later. So that's what's going on here. Somebody probably designed those and, you know, I want to say motion or Photoshop, After could be. Effects. After Effects. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of programs that do that. That's that's pretty advanced level stuff. Um, but I don't want to discourage anyone from trying. I mean, I mean, if my teacher does it for every single lecture, yeah. I can't imagine that he puts in so much time. I'd like, go be, go bug him. Yeah, I would ask yeah. him. Yeah. Like, yeah. Is he using like a Surface tablet? And I think so. yeah, yeah. he's probably doing a screen capture so as he's drawing or or writing. Okay. It's just capturing, you know, what he's done, and yeah, then he's so sending it like out the as video, the lecture. Like, yeah. Cries of distress, confusion. This is a lot of information, so, you know, sorry to overwhelm if it's overwhelming, but this is also a craft. I think just like, you know, anything, it just takes practice. Uh, I would not recommend doing a two-camera shot yet if you're not good at doing one. So practice some of those techniques. Um, I'd yeah. say, you know, again, just keep things simple and short. Uh, we are here to help if you need some help working through that as you guys especially get ready for the pitch competition. We're working with Lex to ensure that he gets some good pitches and good videos this year. So please, you know, use this as a resource. Um, and on that practice piece, you know, work with your friends. Start out with subjects that you know. Maybe interview your dad or your mom or a sister or your wife or husband or whoever it may be um and then practice getting some other shot i mean i don't know yeah, videotape somebody yeah. cooking and then yeah. put in your timeline and practice editing it you'll figure it out as you go along use youtube as a resource too if we're not helpful um everybody is uploading stuff on youtube as instructional videos you can learn how to fix your brakes you can learn how to you know fix a leaky faucet you can learn how to edit video on there too you don't have to subscribe to lynda.com or whatever you'll find people who are passionate about this and have uploaded that kind of stuff yeah i would just reiterate the practice makes perfect it's taken me a while to learn this um and i go to school for it um and like the first year i learned this like thanksgiving i went home and just like shot everything and then edited it together and put music over it just for fun um and it didn't turn out great but it gave me practice and yeah it was helpful so any other questions? Good deal. Yeah. No worries. Thank you. Thanks. All right.